morning, all. You're welcome to the house of God. Um, I believe the Lord has been blessing you since you came, and, and we can be sure that he will continue to bless. So we want to appreciate God for being in our midst. Um, we want to thank him for his readiness to bless us before we go today. Um, we also want to recognize the efforts of the choir. First, we had um, that organ prelude by Brother Michael Wolabi, and then um, that beautiful violin solo, You Are My All, I call it a praise medley um, by Hadassah Odose. I don't know if you were following as you were uh, playing. Um, she, she, she played beautifully well, uh, and we thank God for her. We just pray that God will give us more of Hadassah in Jesus' name. Um, and then we had the choir sing, I've got that old time religion. It is our turn now to sing, and may God give us that old time religion Amen. in our souls as we sing together. Brother Lucky Odumbaku is our song leader, and I guess the first song we're singing is CGS 20. God bless you all. So the King of Heaven Amen. to his faith thy tribute bring, yeah. ransom healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee is praised should sing. We're using tune 453. Tune 453. The last verse says, Angels in the height adore him, ye build him face to face, sun and moon bow down before him, yeah. dwellers all in time and space. Praise him, praise him. We are singing um, all the verses sitting.
next song is CGS 153. CGS 153. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully old. May God let us find a friend in Jesus this morning. Amen. We're singing verse 1 and verse 3. Is 164 CGS 164. The great God of wonders, all thy ways display the attribute divine, but countless acts of pardoning grace beyond thine other wonders shine. We are singing all the three verses sitting.
Storms do not harm me. CGS 5-2-3. Storms do not harm me. They sometimes must cease. Trials cannot harm me, for I have blessed peace. All I've left behind me are long for no more. We are singing, we are singing just one verse, verse one only. CGS 513. Jesus will be with you wheresoever you stray. Jesus will be with you and will guide your way Amen. through the lonely desert over mountains here. Jesus will be with you, brother, everywhere. Amen. We are singing all the three verses. We shall sing verse 3 standing to be led in the congressional prayer. Samoretuga to lead us. Jesus will be with you. Amen. Jesus will be with you. Amen. Jesus will be with you to the end. Yes, Jesus will be with us Amen. this morning. We are inviting the triune God to be in our midst, to revive us, to awake us to righteousness. We want to be awoken to righteousness, not business as usual. Lord, do something wonderful today. Do something wonderful this devotional service. You taught us in the morning how to grow in grace. 
We don't want to stay like that. We want to have the addition formula into our life so that we can go in grace, so that we can bring out fruit meant for repentance. As many old, new, visitor, everyone that are here this morning and that are listening on the internet, revive us, O Lord! Revive us, O Lord! We don't want to be like a lake, stinking. We don't want to be like a dwarf, not growing. We want to grow to a spiritual giant. Help us, O Lord! As many as are looking unto thee for salvation of their soul this morning, after this service, Lord, on the altar, meet them at the point of need. As many as have been here long that has got their spiritual experience, God, we want to make our election sure. Lord, help us. Amen. Your coming is imminent. Yes. Make us ready. Amen. Count us worthy. Amen. Speak through the preacher. Amen. Speak through the preacher. Amen. Holy Spirit, stir the water. As, I'm, as many as are looking unto thee for the healing of their body, Send your virtue, Amen. your your Gilead balm, Amen. your soothing balm. Amen. As many that are aching, Lord, touch, O oh Lord. Amen. You are the great physician. Yes. Do it for us, Lord. Amen. You are the lily of the valley. Yes. A thousand to our soul. Amen. Do it for us, Lord. Amen. Lord, once again, send down revival. Amen. Revive us through the preacher. Amen. Revive us through the song. Amen. Revive us through every aspect of what we're going to do today. When we are going home, we want to have fulfillment that we have met the Lord and he has touched us. Lord, do it for us and more than we can ask. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Once again, we welcome you all to our service. Those of us that are here um, physically and those that may be watching our service, online. We particularly also want to welcome our newcomers, those that may be visiting us for the first time today, or those that are watching our service for the first time. We are happy that you are joining us, and we pray that God will bless you wherever you are located. Amen. We are also happy to see a number of our um, young people who are currently in university, that they are back on holiday. It gladdens our hearts that um, they are able to find their way into the church, Amen. you know. So it, uh, we should rejoice and praise God for them. Um, that's quite encouraging, and we pray that God will continue to help and bless them. Amen. We are apostolic faith for those that um, might be watching our service for the first time, and we are located at number 13 Penhill Road. That's in Bexley, DA 53P. It will be our joy if um, one of these days you are passing by, you stop by to worship with us. Or if you um, are able to join us on a permanent basis, that will even gladden our hearts the more. So you're welcome anytime to come and worship with us. We are thankful to God for the men's conference that I held yesterday. It was a great time. We were greatly blessed. And, and it's our prayer that the various things that God taught us there will apply into our lives and our families so that our wives and our children will notice the difference and Amen. praise God for us. Amen. Yeah. Um, you will notice that our pastor is not around. Bramak and his family are currently worshiping with our brethren in Manchester. They will be returning later today. So let's pray that God will bless his ministry and um, bring him and his family safely back at the end of the day. For this um, afternoon, uh, women have a meeting at 1.15. I guess that's going to be in the back hall, um, but they probably know where that is going to hold. And at 2 o'clock, we're asking for volunteers that can help us in clearing the children hall at the back. We thank God for the progress of the redevelopment of our work here, I mean of our building, that is progressing. So we're moving on to phase two, and for that to happen, that hall needs to be cleared. So we are just appealing to you that um, out of your no time, squeeze out some minutes to help in clearing that hall this afternoon. Um, that is going to be at 2 p.m. And then we will meet again as a congregation at 5 p.m. for prayer meeting. Please make out the time to join us. During the week, God willing, we will have Bible study at 7.30 p.m., on Tuesday at Medway and on Wednesday here 
um, at Bexley. We will be studying devoted spiritual leaders, and that is taken from Acts chapter 18, from verse 23 to verse 28, and Acts chapters 19 and 20. So please uh, make out the time to join us. Try to study your lesson from home so that it will be easier for us to discuss and contribute when we meet together on Wednesday or Tuesday, as the case may be. And on Friday, there will be prayer meeting at 8 p.m. here, um, while on Saturday, our women, we have their monthly prayer meeting at 8 o'clock. Also, that is holding here. Should the Lord tarry, next Sunday, we'll gather together as we are gathering now. It is Father's Day, so it's a day of celebration, um, but we will start the day, as usual, with our Sunday school at 10 o'clock, and then the devotional service will be at 11.15. At 2.30 p.m., we'll have our Father's Day activities. For our annual camp meeting that we've been announcing over time, registration, um, well, of course, registration closed long ago, but even the deadline for payment of the full fee has also come and gone. So we now have an updated list of attendees displayed on the board. Please make out the time to check and be sure that your details have been properly captured. Well, we're happy to announce to you that we have made a significant progress on our quest to um, acquire a church building for our congregation in Aberdeen, Scotland. Um, we thank God that during the week that just went by, we have been able to pay fully for that building. Um, you know that we've been on it for some time, possibly about six or seven months now, but there have been some up and downs on, um, on the part of the sellers. However, we thank God that we have now made um, progress and we have made the payment. We're looking to God um, with the possibility of completing the conveyancing during the week. So we look forward to collecting the keys and then that building becomes ours. Um, as a result, we, and you know that our superintendent general, Brother Ali and his wife, Sister um, Debbie, will be our guest at our um, camp meeting, which holds in July. So the plan is for the church to be dedicated while they are around. That is now scheduled for Sunday, the 4th of August. So by God's grace, the 4th of August, that church in Aberdeen will be dedicated to the Amen. glory of God. Um, let us join in praying that God will make it um, a, a factory where souls will be manufactured for the kingdom of God. Um, that God will make the work to grow significantly. Amen. Special announcement. Brother Amalachiku Ebeleze of Aberdeen Branch and Sister Benice Ajoke Shubowali of Apekan Branch have agreed to be joined together in holy matrimony in this church. If anyone has any objection to their wedlock, such should please register their ground of objection with the ministry. Or, from now, hold their peace forever. Amen. This is the third and the final announcement of that wedding. We shall now listen to the first special, which is Everybody Ought to Know, um, by Otis Deaton. And then we'll have a Bible reading, um, which will be taken by Brother David from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 1 to verse 12. And then the last special, which will be sung by, is, is, that's going to be a solo by Brother Yoajibola. And then we have the word of exhortation. God bless you all.
Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 12. Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, too, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Three, and did all eat the same spiritual meat? Four, and did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Five, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Six. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Seven. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Eight, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Nine, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Ten, neither momo ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. 12 and the last. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed, lest he fall. you 
Joy is sure to come tomorrow. He'll take you through. He'll take you through. It may seem God does not hear you, and with all the gifts you seek, then just lean to trust his silence when the Father does not speak. Let your heart's new courage borrow, for his promises are true. He'll reward your faith tomorrow. He'll take you through. He'll take you through. He'll take you through. However you tried, his tender care is never denied. Just Always trust his promise so true. He'll take you through. He'll take you through. Think not strange of fairy trial, which is sent your faith to try. Though it's mean a great denier to live for him or to die. Count it joy to share Christ's sorrow. Gladness then will come to you. For there's sure a bright tomorrow. Take you through, you take you through. When affliction is upon you, you may say, as Job of old, when he's tested, when he's tried me. I shall then come forth as gold. Then take courage in your sorrow. Seize your tears, let tears be filled. Just remember on the morrow, he'll take you through, he'll take He'll take you through, however you tried. His tender care is never denied. Then always trust his promise so true. He'll take you through, he'll take you Even though a prison cast, though you lose all worldly favor, you will gain a crown at last. And when trials all have ended, if to Jesus you've been true, then the pearly gate will open. He'll take you through. He'll take you through. He'll take you through. However you tried, his tender care is never.
were denied then always trust his promise so true he'll take you through he'll take you through Please turn your Bible with me to the book of um, 2 Peter, chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 17 and 18. 2 Peter, chapter 3, I'll be reading verses 17 and 18. 2 Peter 3, 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. I will read again from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 40. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 40. Verse 40 says, Beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Um, this afternoon, we'll be looking at um, <clears throat> what I have titled, Beware. Um, as you will have seen from our reading portion and um, my opening texts, the word beware seemed to run through it. Our opening text gives us a vivid account of those that went before us. Um, the children of Israel that God led through the wilderness to the promised land. The Bible tells us some of the mistakes that they made um, for which cause God decided that they didn't deserve his rest and <clears throat> they didn't get to the promised land. Only two of them, Joshua and Caleb, made it to the promised land. Even Moses, their leader, who took them by hand, as it were, from Egypt, couldn't make it to the promised land. Nor was Aaron, their first high priest, able to make it to the promised land. Um, the Bible says that these things are written for our own example and then the last verse in our Bible reading portion, verse 12, says, Let him therefore that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. What personally I have observed and which saddens me oftentimes looking inwards is that sometimes we get carried away by the emotion of religion, um, particularly once we have had an encounter with the Lord, we have been saved. And maybe we have even moved on to get sanctified and baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. Oftentimes, we seem to just settle in our rot, and um, we just carry on with the um, emotion of religion. And that is why sometimes at a meeting like this, or Bible study, or prayer meeting, or even camp meeting, you find those, those of us that have been around for a while, we attend such meetings and go home empty-handed. 
although sometimes we're not humble enough to own up that we haven't really gained anything from those meetings. It could be because of our responsibilities. We're just busy running up and down, um, making life easy for others. And when meetings end, we don't find time to sort out our own issues. We don't create time to fall on our knees before God and pray. Um, the meeting has come, it has gone. So at the end of um, a camp meeting, you ask, how was the camp meeting? It was wonderful. Well, what blessing did you get? Oh, plenty blessings. Oh, God came down. It was wonderful. But what was the blessing that you got from it? And we are short of words. So, <clears throat> beware. I looked up the word beware um, in the dictionary, particularly the etymology of it. Um, it says beware is a combination of two words. Be aware. And it is a way of um, calling one to care, to be careful, to watch out, be on the lookout. There is danger ahead. We, for those of us that are drivers and that wrote and passed our driving tests, of course, you can't become a driver in this country except you pass that, um, those tests. You know, there is what is called hazard perception. Um, the, you, there are signs on the road that, that one that there are some dangers lurking around the corner. Be careful so that you can avoid those dangers. So that is the word beware. First, you must be, be um, beware of the deceitfulness of sin. I tell you that sin is quite deceptive. When sin comes, when it shows up, it doesn't necessarily show as sin. Um, like people have said, if Satan were to be manifesting himself physically as Satan, people will recognize him and they will know to run away from him. But the Bible tells us that he presents himself, he disguises himself as an angel of light. So when sin comes into your life, what the devil shows you is the carrot. He fails to show the stick that is behind the carrot. Sin is a killer. The Bible tells us the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And it doesn't matter who it is, because with God, there is no respect of person. You cannot do wrong and expect to enjoy the blessing of God. I was <clears throat> at a Sunday school class um, two Sundays ago, and a brother made a contribution. He said, if you backslide and God helps you, you come back. You get saved, you get sanctified, you get baptized, the Holy Ghost and fire again. He said, God will still hold you responsible for your backsliding. Those things that you have gone away from God to do, you will still suffer the repercussion. God is a just God. Yes. He has forgiven you. But the punishment for sin, the scar that sin leaves on a soul remains. And you will pay dearly for it. And this is why we will often encourage our young people and old people as well that the earlier you give your life to Jesus, the better for you. Yes. When you do it early, you avoid making some embarrassing restitutions. I wish I had known the Lord earlier than I did. But before I met the Lord, I, I got saved at age 18 by God's grace. But before then, I had done some unthinkable things, some evils. I had stolen things. And... Um, which when the Lord saved me, I had to go back to make good of those things. I had to go and make restitution. And um, one of it I made after I had got married. And what was it? It was that I stole popcorn 
and I had to go back to our landlord then, who was the person making and selling popcorn. He trusted us enough that because he would make so much that his shop could not contain it, he would put some bags in our rooms, in our room, uncovered, thinking that we were good boys, but we would help ourselves to it. After I got saved, I had to go to him. I lay on my belly and I was begging him that this was what I did. I think that was disgraceful. That is what we are asking you to avoid. Yes. If you give your heart to Jesus Christ now, you will avoid such embarrassments. Yes. I stole books when I was in school that I had to return after I became saved. I initially disguised, I sent those books undercover, but the Spirit of God did not let me go. He said, you haven't made restitution of what you did. You need to go and show your face that you were a thief when you were in this school. And until I did that, I had no peace. Yeah. Young man, young woman, save yourself the trauma of having to go and make restitutions in future by giving your heart to the Lord now. Amen. Beware of procrastination. It is very easy to come and go every time, hoping that sometime in future you will make it right. Sometime in future you will become a Christian. That time may never come. The Bible says, if you hear his voice today, this is that day that you need to hearken to the voice of God. Um, you might not hear that voice again. God is a just God, and he will hold everybody responsible for what they know. God knows what you and I know. We may um, pretend, we may deceive people. Sometimes we may even end up deceiving ourselves, but we cannot deceive God. What you know, God knows, and God knows what I know. Um, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 24, verses 24 and 25, um, this is talking about Felix. Felix had Paul. Paul was a great preacher. And what did Felix say in verse 24? He said, and after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, um, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Verse 25. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. The Bible does not record that a convenient season ever came the way of Felix, that Felix ever had the opportunity to come to the Lord again. Um, this may be the last time that you will hear the, um, the gospel preached to you. I don't know. For me, it may be the last time that I will stand behind the pulpit like this, that I may, I may even see the daylight. It can happen. God can call anybody home anytime. Um, last week, a bosom friend of mine um, was buried. This was a friend that when he was ill, I was always visiting, going to him, praying for him. And then suddenly one day I called him. He said he was being moved to the hospice. And I knew that was like a sentence of death. Uh, of course, I went, I visited him and encouraged him. The last time I was to go to visit him, God spoke to my heart that I should take the oil with me, anoint him and pray for him. He was a Christian, not a member of our church. So I went that Thursday. On my way, I forgot the oil. I went back home to pick the oil. And I went and prayed for him. After that, when his wife visited him, he told him that Francis visited today and he has never prayed like this for me before. That today was different. Well, then the next day or thereabout, I traveled. And when I came back, I called him on a Wednesday. He didn't pick my call. And I assumed, oh, well, he was probably sleeping. He will call me back. The next morning, which was Thursday, this is now eight days after that visit, um, it was my, my phone woke me up, and it was his name that showed on my phone. I picked it, and as usual, I just said, Deji. But we know that is Deji. How are you? And the voice that came through was that of his daughter. The voice was shaking and said, Uncle, it is not my dad. Sadly, my dad passed this morning. Of course, that broke me down. 
Well, he was buried this week that went by. I'm older than him. He was, um, he just worked with me um, when we were in the bank, but we're both some friends. Now he's gone, never to be heard of, never to be seen again. It could be my turn. This evening might never come for me. I don't know when your time may come. That is why now is the time that we need to take action. Yes. Don't procrastinate because tomorrow may never come. Beware of complacency. I did say earlier on that it is very possible and it's quite easy for one to keep coming and coming. You know, sometimes because you have been coming for a long time, we tend to call you a brother. And we tend to call you a sister because it could be that it would be embarrassing to still be not um, to still not see you as one of us. But we thank God that in our church we don't have a register of names of members. But the names of members are written in heaven. Yes. The question is: Is your name there in heaven? It doesn't matter what we call you here on earth. What matters is what God calls you. Beware of complacency. Beware of them um, just coming and going and remaining the same. Beware of the time of ease. The time of ease often, often comes after we have grown in prayers before God, for God to bless us, to do certain things for us. And because God is faithful in his own time, in his own economy, he will answer those prayers and we will get those things. But what does happen oftentimes is those blessings that God has given us now replace God in our lives. And then because of that beautiful job that God has provided, you no longer can come for Bible study. You no longer can attend prayer meeting. Now you, you will manage to come in the morning, but you cannot attend Sunday school because you had to sleep and wake up late. And if evening service is out of the equation for you because you must go back home and rest because work commences the following morning, the same work that God provided for you. For some people, it is... They are responsibility at home. God provided those children for you. God provided that house for you. God gave you those conveniences that have now seemingly replaced God in your life. You have suddenly become um, um, an important person. You know, you have suddenly become someone that is um, reckoned with. And because you have got to that position now, it is time to put God aside. I tell my children from time to time, I say, God cannot be used as a spare tire. No. I will even tell them that I am your father. I will never accept that you use me as a spare tire. Uh, it's only when you need my help that you show up. No, 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 no. I will not be there for you. We need to build a relationship. Yes. God cannot be used as a spare tire. You need to build a relationship with God in your time of ease. Remember David? It was when war ceased for him. There was no more battle to fight. Everything was quiet. All his enemies submitted to him, and they were bringing tribute. There was so much riches for David, he lacked nothing anymore. That was the time he went to his rooftop to relax. And that was the time he looked where he shouldn't have looked. That was the time he saw what he shouldn't have seen. That was the time he sent for the person he shouldn't have sent for. And that was the time he fell into his sin and it became irreparable. Sin damages lives. You may do it in secret, but the result will come in the open. God told David, even after he got rid of Uriah, God told him, in the open, your own wives will be slept with. You did it in secret with Bathsheba. Before your wives, it will be done in the open. David repented and God forgave him, but he paid the price. Beware of your time of ease. What, what made Solomon to love strange women? It was because life was easy for him. If he was always facing battles, left, right, center, forward, he wouldn't think of those strange women. He brought them from Egypt, the same Egypt where God delivered them. He brought wives from them, built high places for their idols, brought their idols, imported them to Israel. It was because things were easy for him. Of course, there will also be times of trouble. Beware of those times. 
Don't let those troubles drive you away from God. God is able to see you through those troubles as we head in that um, solo. God will take you through them. But don't be deceived. Those times will come. Times that will challenge you. Times that will want to ask if truly you are a Christian. When it will appear like the heavens are sealed and your prayers are not going through. But God is just around the corner. He's there to help you and he will help you. If only you will let him. You know, Habakkuk was the one that said in Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. He said, that is Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to verse 19. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruits be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. Um, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, in verse 18, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. Do not think that it is when things are easy that you will serve God. Um, just this week that just um, went by, we had the opportunity of visiting a brother who shared his testimony with us. He said um, he had always looked to God and challenged the people of God that, God, look, I want to see miracles like they happened in the days of Jesus. That I don't want somebody to say he had headache and he was prayed for. Now the headache has gone. No, I can't see that headache. I can't feel it. But I want miracles that I can see. And he said that Sunday, his pastor preached about faith, trusting God, uh, that whatever you ask from God, just believe, and the Lord will do it. Uh, but that uh, before the Lord does it, you may be challenged. The devil might want you to doubt. Just keep on trusting. And this man is an engineer, a, a well-celebrated engineer in his country of, um, of, of abode, you know, very, um, a very wealthy man. And so he said this particular day, um, he had to um, um, pour some um, concrete. And he got a contract to pour some concrete. And as they got to the site, prepared everything, um, it suddenly... Uh, the cloud suddenly gathered and it was threatening to rain. So he looked to God and said, God, I have always looked to you for a physical miracle. So he prayed to God and said, please, let not this rain disturb us. We need to pour this concrete. Everything was ready. And if they poured the concrete and it rained, it will be messed up. They will have to spend time packing it and then they will prepare and pour another one. He said he called a co-worker of his. He's an employer of labor. And as they were praying, he felt rain drop on his um, hand. And he told his partner, "Say, don't worry, that rain is dropping already. Let's keep on pouring. And they were pouring. And then suddenly, it started raining. And it was, as it was raining, it got to 10 feet. Before where they started pouring the concrete, the rain stopped there. Amen. And 10 feet beyond where he poured the concrete, the rain continued beyond there. Um, and then when it finished raining, people around came around to see how soaked they were and how messed around the work was. They got there and found that everywhere was dry. That there was rain to the left, there was rain to the right. And then he said, yes, this is the miracle I've been asking God for. But do you know, he said, despite that, he did not give his totality to God. So it is not miracle that will make you to serve God. Thank God that today he's a Christian. Thank God that he serves the Lord today. I'm just letting you know that don't wait until that miracle happens before you give your heart unto the Lord. Beware of backbiting and evil speaking. Beware of mourning. It doesn't pay off. Um, Aaron and uh, Miriam, they came together. They spoke behind Moses. Moses wasn't there, but God heard them. God did not hold them guiltless. Beware of backbiting. Uh, I think it was Brother Darrell, our superintendent general, that said, when you trash the church and the ministers of God at home before your children, he said, um, 
just remember that you'll be repaid. God will certainly pay you back. You get, you get home, you trash the people of God, um, yeah, and you mess up the church big time. And now you expect your children to come and give their hearts to the Lord. Uh, that would be a tough one. That would be a tough one. So beware of that. Beware of forsaking the assembly of the children of God. A number of us find other things to engage in for during evening service. A number of us find other things to engage in during Bible study, during the week, and prayer meeting. But we heard this morning in our Sunday school, we need to grow. And these are the things that will enable us to grow yeah. in the Lord. Let us come together. Beware of backsliding. Don't think you will just go out there briefly and come back. Um, it is not easy. It is not easy. There are a number of people that are roaming the streets that once knew the Lord. But today, they are out there. They are having difficulty coming back. Um, don't try it at all. Beware of covetousness. Beware of causing an offense to anyone. We heard that in the Sunday school this morning. It, it is, the Bible tells us that offense must certainly come. But woe unto him by whom that offense comes. We will step on each other's toes, definitely. But don't be that person that is deliberately stepping on people's toes. You know, we pray that God will give those uh, on whose toes you step to forgive you. Yes. Yeah, but also you do your due diligence. And um, you see, beware of unforgiveness too. Forgiveness for a Christian is not conditional. God did not say forgive those that repent. Those that apologize to you only. Say, forgive those that trespass against you. We will trespass against one another. Remember that God forgives you your sins when you ask for forgiveness. So when people offend you too, give them the olive branch. Forgive them. You see, the, 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 the danger in your failing to forgive is that you'll be hurting yourself. Learn to forgive. Let go and let God. Beware of bitterness. Bitterness will kill. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. He said we should prevent the root of bitterness from springing up in us. And I can tell you that it is an easy thing. And when bitterness springs up in your heart against someone, it will take God to help you to overcome it. Then this afternoon, I just invite you to come to the altars to pray. If you haven't known the Lord, it is time to give your heart to Jesus Christ. If you are struggling with certain sins in your life, ask God to help you. The Lord is willing and able to forgive. Whatever the problems may be in your life, God is able to give you victory. God bless you as you sing SS&S &S 617 in closing. I invite you to come to pray. God bless you.
thank you for this warning that you've brought our way. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. Mighty King of glory, we are looking up to you for grace. Jesus Christ, you are our friend. Yes. We pray that you help each and every one of us, Amen. Lord. Wherever anyone may be falling short, the grace of God. Lord, we pray for this afternoon. Amen. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Amen. Lord, we pray that if souls will be saved, we pray that souls will be sanctified. Amen. We pray that you sang, baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. We pray that you will heal. Amen. You pray that you open our hearts this morning, O oh Lord, for to, to, you help us to cry out unto you every, any area of our life that we, we may need your assistance this morning, Lord. We pray that you help us to hone up. You help us to cry unto you. We pray that you answer all our prayers. Lord, we want to give you glory and honor. We want to thank you, O oh Lord, for blessings that you shower upon us. We want to thank you, O oh Lord, that you help each and every one of us to make it to heaven at last, Amen. to see you face to face. Amen. Do this and many more for us, O oh Lord, for we ask in Jesus' name. 